Hey guys, uh, okay, just working on this Cat 301.8 here today, 301.8C, I think it's a 2007. Um, okay, so I just want to discuss some fuel, uh, so injector pump, lift pump, uh, fuel pickup tube issues. Um, I'm just going to explain to you what happened with this thing, and hopefully just me explaining it and going through it helps you guys in some way. You know, a lot of times it's nice just to see the rooting of, of tubes and how things work. So basically what was happening for literally like the last, oh my God, probably two, three years or so, you know, you'd be driving this thing and then you put some pressure on it like you, like you really need it to work and then it would sort of cough and die out. Um, and I've... I remember replacing the lift pump. So let me first get into the whole fuel system on this thing. Cause I'm sure a lot of people are watching this video and like, what, like just explain this to me. So basically the way the fuel system works is this is underneath the seat. So to remove the seat, there's just four bolts there. And then there's an access plate here, which uh, you don't need to remove, but it helps you get to the fuel lines that come through there. So basically there's the top of the, uh, uh, fuel tank right there and you'll see there's two hoses coming out of it you've got that hose right there that's the feed line so that's coming from the tank and that's your return line going back to the tank and that's for your uh, fuel level gauge and I'm not going to pull it out but basically in there is two metal tubes uh, one reaches right down in the bottom of the tank and then it's got a small 90 degree elbow with a rubber hose on the end that's what picks up the fuel. I've already had that out. To take that out, you undo that collar and the whole thing slides right out. You have to remove the hoses and the connector, obviously, but whole thing slides out. I checked it to make sure it wasn't broken in any way, and it's not. It's actually a very well-built part, and I can't see it pretty much ever failing. Uh, it's all, it's either aluminum or stainless steel, so it's a really high quality part. So anyway, from the fuel uh, outlet there, it comes through the firewall, and you'll see the two lines there. And actually, it's a good view of down there. So if you can see, that's the fuel lift pump. So that's a 12 volt pump. And that line comes directly from the tank into the side of that pump. That pump is self priming, so it'll actually prime itself. Uh, and I'll show you from underneath. You remove that cover right there and there's the pump. So I replaced that pump because I was having the sputtering issue. Um, and it's usually, I mean, this should be the first thing you check. Uh, but when you get to the end of this video, you realize how ridiculous the problem actually was. But anyway, so replace that. It's like a hundred dollar part. And the last one had about a thousand hours on it. So whatever it's in there from that pump. Um, oh, and I should explain the, how the circuitry works. So this pump is on when you turn the key to the on position, you'll hear it pump for approximately five seconds before you start the engine. That sort of just primes the system. Um, and then when you start it, it's all, it's running 24 seven. So it's running when the engine's running, it's running. Um, so you want to make sure you have voltage that, and you do have a functioning lift pump from there. It goes through like a, there's sort of like a little firewall here and comes through. And then basically these two, these two tubes here comes from there, goes into the one side of the fuel water separator and fuel filter. I replaced this as well. It's not a cat part, but it, that's the Napa version of it. Uh, the Napa one fit pretty well. You know, it seems to act the same way. Anyway, it goes in the side there, then comes out uh, back through that little mini firewall. And this tube I've got going into the bottle normally would go to the top of the injector pump right here. So your injector pump is actually, for anyone that wants to know, the injector pump is a device basically connected to these three uh, lines right here. So each one of these lines goes to your injectors. Um, and the lift pump, or sorry, the uh, injector pump itself is that block. So there's one, two, three, four uh, screws holding it in. And it's sort of like a mechanical pump block looking thing that sits in the engine compartment. And it's bathed in oil and uh, Another thing to note, this is your shut off solenoid. So the way it works is you can manually press it. So if your engine's running, you wanna shut off, you press that. And basically what it does is it slides a plate uh, and covers the holes feeding the fuel. That's what actually what shuts your engine off. It's usually electronically controlled right here. When you turn the key, you'll notice. So when you turn the key off, you'll see this thing suck in for about, I think five, 10 seconds. And then all of a sudden it'll just pop out and then it's ready for the next start. So. 
uh, that's the fuel routing. So you obviously want to check your hoses, uh, check your, make sure your lift pump's working, make sure your fuel filter's not clogged. I did all these things. Um, and then I connected the fuel line and then I bled the system. So to bleed the system, like I said, turn the key, you'll hear it pumping. And basically you can cycle the pump and open this screw just a little bit and you can bleed uh, any air out of the system. And then it just returns back to the tank via that line there and it goes into the top of the, the pickup tube assembly that I showed you earlier. So that's the normal operation. So what I was doing is I was bleeding it out and it, you know, it was looking pretty good. And, but I was, no matter what I did, I was getting just these minuscule little air bubbles. And, you know, I just thought it would clear itself up, no big deal. So I, I would start it, it'd run for like two seconds rough and then shut off. Uh, so that wasn't good. Um, so I did that for a little while longer. I start, sort of started to get worried that it might be the lift pump. And I mean, this thing's only got 2000 hours on it. These lift pumps, like, I mean, in my opinion, this thing should last for like 10,000 hours before you have to replace that lift pump or at least rebuild it. So I really didn't want to change that. So I got back to the air situation. So, you know, it may seem simple when you're explaining it after the fact, but when you're right in, in the thick of it, um, it's hard to sometimes diagnose these things, but what was happening is the, and I don't know whether the fuel line was damaged or it was just the hose clamps, but the whole, the original hose clamps holding this hose on was on and tight and seemed to be, you know, on there. Okay. There's no fuel leaking, but you got to keep in mind, this line is actually under vacuum. So when the lift pumps on, it's sucking fuel out. So you likely wouldn't have a leak of diesel fuel leak if there was a leak. So at the end of the day, what I did is I took this line right out, went and got a new piece of 5 16 hose right down to the pump there. Uh, and when you get a new piece, obviously it has fresh ends instead of the ones that are all mangled and hard and don't really seal right. Put that on, put a nice new tight hose clamp on, did the same down there. And what I'll do is I'll just cycle... So what I'm gonna do is when you turn the key, it obviously cycles the pump, but then if you turn the key and it tries to start, uh, it'll continually run, even if it dies, it'll continually run the electric pump. So you can actually test this. So let me turn it on here, try to start it, hear the pump. So they tried to run and you still hear the pump pumping. And I just wanna show you guys what this should look like. So nice, smooth flow of fuel. So what I, when I did this before and I was letting it run into this bottle, what I was getting is a nice smooth flow like that for about five, six, seven seconds. And then you'd get just a little burp of air and then smooth, smooth, smooth. And just that little burp of air that was being sucked in on the vacuum side of the, of the fuel line was enough to not produce or not send enough fuel to the injector pump and cause poor idling, uh, poor engine performance. Um, and that was obviously my problem. I mean, replacing the, the fuel filter, I think it had 500 hours on it. Um, and the lift and the lift pump probably helped, but at the end of the day, my real problem was the air getting into the line. So what I'll do is I'll put that back on there. And I'll put the hose clamp back on. The hose clamps after the lift pump uh, are important, obviously, but they're not as important as on the vacuum side. Because if they're on the pressure side, you'll obviously see a diesel fuel leak if they're leaking. Um, so, you know, I'm just going to use the original ones. And if I see a leak, I'll obviously put a tighter one on or a new fuel line. So uh, I know there's a lot of talking, but I hope that helps some guys out just sort of... Uh, you know going through one of these and if you have a similar problem or a problem that's totally unrelated at least you know how the fuel lines are rooted so thank you for watching